The area beneath the backboards is the battleground of basketball, the place where games are often won or lost. For 21 years, Moses Malone made it his personal domain, ruling the paint with ferocity and determination. Moses was relentless. I mean, he, he just never stopped. He went after everything. I tell you, it's like being on a railroad track and a locomotive is coming at you, and there's no way you can stop it. He wasn't the most skilled player. Uh, he was a guy who would be willing to throw up the worst kind of shot ever, knowing, though, that he could land and pounce. He was very much like a cat. I think the Lord gave me this talent to be the best. Uh, that's why I think I would name Moses. Malone grew up in Petersburg, Virginia, where he emerged as a high school sensation. In 1974, he became one of the first players to go directly from high school to the pros, signing with the ABA's Utah Stars. When we signed him, I knew that he had great talent. I had no idea that he would be doing the things that he's doing right now. Uh, he is one of the quickest jumpers I've ever seen. He could be maybe the best offensive rebounder in the history of the game. Uh, he's very good at it now, and I'm sure in a year or two, when he's old enough to shave, he'll be excellent. After two years in the ABA, Malone moved to the Houston Rockets of the NBA in 1976. And at the age of just 21, he quickly showed he would become a force in the league. But if you didn't absolutely face guard him, there was no chance. If you turned your head, you were going to lose sight of him, and he was going to get the offensive rebound. He became a dominant uh, force in the middle where you couldn't do anything with him. You could see that he became a man because he became physical and tough, uh, has a mean streak. Malone's fierce playing style masked an inner shyness. His introverted demeanor made him a puzzling figure, perceived by many as being distant. Moses was the kind of guy, you know, from, from a writer's standpoint, very, very difficult to get close to. Didn't speak that well. There were guys I remember that used to mock him. When you come in and you're a shy kid, and then you get bombarded by the media every day, I mean, you can turn inward and say, you know, I'm just not going to get burned by this. He had a very mysterious aura about him. I think it was a lot of insecurity because when you're out into the real world, out in society, you, you, you tend to function a little bit differently because this is an arena that you're really not sure about. But it was on the court where Moses clearly felt most at ease and he continued to develop into one of the game's best setters. In 1979, he was named the league's MVP, and two years later, he led the underdog Rockets all the way to the finals against the Boston Celtics. Moses Malone has had to work hard. Still can't get the ball to drop. Here he goes again, and he still can't. Malone pushes it in. With Moses carrying them on his back, the Rockets took Boston to six games before coming up short. The following year, Malone was once again named MVP, but he could not lead Houston back to the finals. And in 1982, he was traded to Philadelphia. Instead of single-handedly carrying a team, he was now asked to be the missing piece of a championship puzzle. They understood, they knew this is the man. And he was on a mission, and he, came, he had come to Philadelphia to get a win. Malone, the rebound, up court, touchdown. Julius baseline, Malone with the offensive rebound. Is Malone strong or what? The more they push me, the feel like the stronger I get. And I get more aggressive, but then I know what I got, what I got to do. Wait a minute, the more they push you, the stronger you get? Oh yeah, I love pushing. His personality just came out and, you know, it just made for great chemistry. We had great chemistry on our team. Blocked by Malone. Here comes the fast-breaking Sixer. Up they come, Cheeks. Here's Irving. Good he was so funny and animated, and he was a real character, but uh, when it came time to win, I mean, nobody wanted to win more than Moses. After leading the Sixers to the league's best record, Moses would not be denied in the playoffs. By proclaiming, fo, 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 he boldly predicted a Philadelphia sweep in every round. Moses gave our team feeling that whoever we stepped on the court with, we had an advantage of the center position. We had the best center in basketball. In the NBA Finals against the Lakers, Malone and the Sixers kept rolling. They dominated the defending champions in shockingly easy fashion, sweeping them in four straight games. 
Cheeks on his way to the world championship. The Moses slammed up. Congratulate the world champion, Philadelphia 76ers. How's it feel to get him in four straight, though? Oh, man. That's the best. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> After his championship season, Moses continued to be a dominant player for the next decade. Playing for several other teams before retiring in 1995, Moses Malone was a model of durability and tenacity for more than two decades, his greatness withstanding the test of time. He was blessed with a body that could hold up and take the punishment and endure it all for that number of games and minutes and, and years. I think age is a number. I think it's come from, from the mind. You, know, you let people tell you what you can't do, and then when you can't do it, you, you're going to have a big problem. Moses Malone is a historical figure in basketball. He came in with such a passion. He came in with a, a level of pride that few players were ever able to match.